Ina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Uh, it's kind of early in the Monday morning at this time, or late Sunday night, however you want to look at it, where I'm coming from. And today's been a little bit of a... I got the Mortal Kombat video out today, and that was fun. I really enjoyed having uh, my friend over and playing some Mortal Kombat with him, with unfitting music in the background. But not feeling overly great today, so I'm actually going to bow out of the 30-minute message today. I plan on having that up sometime later on this week. Please look forward to it. Tonight, I'm just going to do a quick excerpt from First Chronicles chapter 20. And hopefully you guys can uh, forgive me and hang in there. The full message will come. I'm going to take it a little bit easier today, uh, as I have done for today, and just will do sleep it off and feel a little bit better tomorrow or today or however that works it's going to be just verse 2 first chronicles chapter 20 verse 2 then david took their king's crown from his head and found it to weigh a talent of gold i don't know the exact measurements of what that means in english but it's, it's a sizable amount and there were precious stones in it and it was set on david's head also he brought out the spoil of the city in great abundance and this is going to be more of an allegorical interpretation. Like I've said many times, that whereas we don't go to war in the physical, nowadays as believers in Christ, we go out to war in the spiritual. You know, we don't go out and ravage nations and cities and people. We go out and we tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Uh, we win hearts and souls for the Lord. We, um, what we do is we take captive thoughts and imaginations and things that go on in the mind and bring them captive to the obedience of Christ. And so that is, therein lies the allegory for this chapter. We are not only allowed, we are commanded to go in and raid the enemy's camp, take the crown off of his head. And that doesn't, that doesn't mean we become personifications of selfishness, lust, greed, pride, etc. What that means is rather we throw those things down and we become the king in place of greed. We become generous in place of selfishness. We become selflessness in place of lust. We replace that with true love in place of fear. We replace it with love and faith. When we come in, we come in as conquering kings for the Lord. We don't let the devil and his ways, and the world's ways, and even our own sinful ways, get in the way of what God wants to do. We tear down all of those things, and we behave the way God wants us to behave. We think the way the Lord wants us to think, and we tear down that stronghold, and we wear the crown, and not the enemy. And that should be the case in our lives, in our homes. And I'm even going to extend that to the, the churches that we corporately um, dwell in, the counties, cities, and towns we corporately dwell in, and I believe that can even be applied as far as the state and the nation. Um, that is one of the reasons I put up political videos on this channel every so often. I want to address the serious issues because it is important that as Christians, we, we have a certain thought process. We have a biblical worldview. And we want to pass that on to other people because we believe that the Bible is the Word of God, that God is real, that Jesus Christ really did come in the flesh and die for our sins. And we want to pass that good news, that gospel message on to other people. And we want them to believe in that to the saving of their souls and the changing of their lives. And we do want other people to think this way. And we want that ideology and that worldview to be reflected in the way we conduct ourselves and once it gets to a certain buildup and momentum, we want to see our communities conducted in that way. Even our state and even our federal government conducted in that way. It's one of the reasons I vote my conscience. Um, that's one of the reasons I encourage others to vote their conscience as well. They don't have to agree with me, but make your voice heard. Make your voice count. Um, and even if you're not a Christian, kind of like engage in ideological combat with me because... If we're contradicting, one of us needs to adjust their worldview. doesn't mean we'll agree, but it does mean we should honestly compete and fight it out and see who is right. I'm a firm believer in that. Um, and I'm okay being wrong. I'm okay being wrong about pretty much anything, as long as the evidence is there to sufficiently show me and convince me, hey, I'm wrong. So, yeah, in a, it is war. 
it is an ideological and, even though most non-believers wouldn't acknowledge it, a spiritual war for the hearts and souls of men. I don't take that lightly. And as Christians, we are called to go out, fight, and win. And in Jesus' name, we can. The victory is ours, and I said in a very recent previous video, in Christ Jesus. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let's rise up. Take this as a call to battle. I may not be feeling too well today, but I'm feeling well enough to put out this video and make that proclamation, hey, we Christians, we need to stand up, we need to rise up and stand up for what we believe in. May not be feeling too great, I feel good enough to say that and put that out there. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.